62. Okay. At this time, I'm going to place my patient on a cardiac monitor. What do I see? Sinus tech. Okay, so my general impression of this patient is that he's having a severe allergic reaction to peanuts. So what I'm going to do is um, monitor his breathing. If it gets any worse, assist him with a BVM. I'm also going to give him an injection of Epi sub Q, start him on a NEB treatment, uh, get him in the back of the ambulance and initiate transport, where I'll give him a uh, start an IV of normal saline and go ahead and give him some Benadryl. Is there anything else you would do for this patient? Um, I would go ahead and do my ongoing assessment, reassess any of my interventions and how he's reacting to the medications. Also uh, reassess my focus history and my initial assessment. Have my partner obtain a second set of vitals and continue monitoring. Is there anything else? No, nope, that's it. Thank you. The station is complete. Begin the station by indicating that the proper personal protective equipment is being used. Size up the scene to determine that it is safe. Gather information about the incident to determine the mechanism of injury or nature of the illness. This will help you determine the need to stabilize the spine. And finally, consider the need for additional resources. With the scene size up complete, approach the patient and begin your initial assessment. Verbalize your general impression of the patient. Determine responsiveness and level of consciousness. Determine the patient's chief complaint. Identify and manage any immediate life threats involving airway, breathing, and circulation. If you determine a need for immediate intervention, including oxygenation or ventilation, this is the time to verbalize it. Identify a priority patient and verbalize your transport decision. With the initial assessment complete, the rescuer should perform the focused history and physical exam. This assessment phase includes gathering information on the history of the present illness, past medical history, and baseline set of vital signs, including diagnostics such as an ECG. As part of the focused history and physical exam, the rescuer should evaluate any pain the victim describes by using the letters OPQRST. These letters stand for onset, which refers to the point the problem first started, provoking factors, which refers to anything that seems to bring on the problem or make it better or worse, quality, which refers to a description of the pain, such as sharp, dull, stabbing, squeezing, radiation, which refers to any additional areas where the pain may be present, such as chest pain that radiates into the shoulder or jaw, severity, which refers to a pain scale typically 1 to 10, with 1 being normal and 10 being the worst pain imaginable, and time, which refers to items such as whether the pain has been constant or intermittent, and if it has occurred on other occasions. Use the mnemonic SAMPLE to gather important information about the patient's history. SAMPLE stands for signs and symptoms the patient is experiencing, allergies, particularly to medications. Medications, including prescription and over-the-counter medications, past medical history, particularly involving and similar episodes in the past, last oral intake, including food and beverages, and any events leading up to this problem. The next step involves closer inspection of any affected body part or body system such as the respiratory or cardiovascular system. Vital signs and diagnostic measures, such as an ECG, are also completed at this time. With the focused history and physical exam complete, the rescuer should state the field impression of the patient, verbalize the treatment plan, and reevaluate the earlier transport decision. With the main portions of the assessment and management complete, the rescuer needs to conduct an ongoing assessment during transport. The ongoing assessment enables the rescuer to repeat the initial assessment, vital signs, and focused assessment regarding the patient complaint. It also enables the rescuer to evaluate how the patient is responding to the treatment that has been provided. With the scenario complete, the examiner checks the candidate's performance against the critical criteria for the station. The critical criteria for this station that would have resulted in failure were failing to initiate transport of the patient within a 15-minute time limit, 
failing to take or verbalize the use of body substance isolation precautions, failing to determine scene safety before approaching the patient, failing to provide a high concentration of oxygen and adequate ventilation, failing to find and manage problems associated with the airway, breathing, hemorrhage, or shock, failing to differentiate the need for transport from the need for continued assessment at the scene, failing to assess the airway, breathing, and circulation before performing a detailed physical examination, failing to determine the patient's primary problem, and administering a dangerous or inappropriate intervention. Remember to verbalize scene safety and BSI. Take your time and walk through sample step by step. Remember that BLS interventions, such as the use of oxygen and ventilation, should always come before ALS interventions, such as endotracheal innovation, starting an IV, or administering medication. And if you find a life-threatening problem, don't delay. Fix it right away.